Hello and welcome to Doctor Networks. My name is Ahmed Mukhtar, and today we're going to be working on a lab on intrusion prevention system via FMC. And uh, our FTD is going to be uh, the machine. The machine we're going to be managing, and uh, this is where we're, we're going to be running the IPS services on. But first, our we're going to be doing a little bit of hacking. Uh, hacking in terms that I have a Kali Linux box over here uh, in, the, uh, in the outside zone. And I have the most vulnerable system in uh, you know, the planet right now is the Windows XP. And I'm going to be using Windows XP. I'm going to first of all going to hack Windows XP. I'm going to show you how that hack happens. And then I'm going to show you what happens when I have an IPS in between them. Uh, Primarily uh, having a line of defense between the Windows XP box and the hacker. So let's begin. So first off, just to familiarize you with the topology right now, um, here is our Kali Linux. Uh, there it is. <laughs> we have an SSH session to the Kali Linux, and just to show you what the interfaces look like, uh, we have IF conf IF config. Uh, Ethernet zero. This is gonna be the interface. Or this is the data interface, and this is the interface that we just showed you in our uh, topology. Here it is. Here's that interface. Okay. Uh, Windows XP is also connected. I have a remote desktop towards it. And please ignore this 19 series that I have. I actually have two NICs on every each and every device I have because one is for the management part. Okay, so this is the Windows box, and just uh, a note here that Windows XP end of support is on April 8, 2014. I have no idea why is it showing me this message right now, but the thing is, Windows XP is out of support, out uh, end of sale, end of life. That is because uh, it is so vulnerable because we don't have any security updates anymore of it. Uh, similar is the case with Windows 7. So if you are on Windows 7, I would recommend you to upgrade your Windows. So let's go towards our Kali Linux boss. So we're gonna be using MFS console. For, to save some time, I already have the attack over here uh, and scripted. So we're just gonna be using an SMP based attack that is on port 443, the same port you use for file sharing on Windows boxes. And uh, we're just going to be, uh, you know, like, uh, first of all, I'll just open up MFS console. MFS console. Oh, what's wrong with that? M MSF console, sorry, MSF console. MSF console, sorry about that. I'm not a hacker, okay? First of all, I'm a script kitty. We're, we are all script kitties if we uh, come to that uh, because we just run scripts that, that already exist on, and, uh, on the internet. So we don't, have, we don't actually write codes and everything. So we're not a hackers. We're just, you know, testers. We're testing out whatever uh, are the vulnerabilities on a system. And for this system, obviously it's highly vulnerable to any attack we have so let's just change these ip addresses first of all you have to set some parameters whenever you're doing an exploit um for, first of all the exploit i'm going to be using is this one it's, a, it's an smb exploit and then i have some set commands that these are the parameters you have to specify in an, in any attack first of all the r host means remote host so remote host is uh, let me check that. Uh, our remote host is a 192.168.1.2. So we're gonna change this to 192.168.222.1.2. And then we're gonna have 192.168. This is me. The L host means local host. It's gonna be 192.168.111. Oh, sorry. The triple one dot one two three. This is gonna be me. And uh, the payload that I'm going to be setting is a reverse TCP. That means that when I hack it, when I hack the Windows XP, it's going to have a reverse connection to me. And I I'll be listening on a specific port. And in this case, it will be uh, 4444, which is a default, by the way. Uh, okay. Uh, let's just copy and paste that. Save some time. Yeah, there it is. Cool. Okay. I'll just hit exploit and let it run. 
I just feel like a hacker whenever I do this. It's, it's just so exciting. If I get the metaverter uh, um, symbol, uh, that means it's hacked. To get the shell of the Windows XP, I'll just type in shell and I'm inside Windows XP. To show you, uh, I'll be just hitting, uh, I'll be just creating a folder right now. I'll just hit uh, Control D, uh, C D, and uh, go to C drive. And um, this is the exact path. Um, wait a second, where is the path? Oh, there it is. This is the exact path. This is the desktop of my user this is my windows pc as you can see i can see a lot of software some wireshark uh, google chrome some folders here i'm going to be creating a folder now um, on this specific desktop oh no it requires me is not it's not recognized oh sorry 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 oh what is it it's a little buggy when you have hacked it so i'm inside of the desktop so i'm going to be mkdr it's just like Linux. I'm gonna make directory. I'm gonna make a directory and make a folder actually. So it will be called hacked. So that basically means the operation is completed. Now let's check it out. Oh, lovely! Look at that. You have been hacked. So I have a hacked folder, and you can go inside the folder now. Um, so this is it. This is how you actually hack a Windows that is so much vulnerable, like uh, Windows XP. Now. We're going to be using FMC to actually deploy the IPS services and see what happens afterwards. Behold, the new FMC 6.6. .6. This is the latest and greatest version as of right now. It's 27th of April 2020. So let me show you. It's pretty neat now. One, two, three, four logging in it has a beautiful new GUI if you want to go towards it uh, uh, Cisco has that GUI installed pre-installed actually you can switch between the older GUI and the newer one and it's very much bug free now it's pretty much good the developers of Cisco are doing a very good job so here's the light theme uh, as we go through I'll be just showing you the theme uh, how is it how it is uh, it's just gonna take a second to switch over to the new team or a minute <laughs> any second now yeah there it is so this is the theme exactly the same theme I'm just gonna be going through the same this team uh, for your convenience and I'm, I'm gonna be switching over to the uh, previous team again so just to give you a look and feel everything is the same so I go into policies and I'll be going to intrusion so I'm gonna make an intrusion policy and let me create an intrusion policy there by default there are no intrusion policies so I'm gonna be saying um, okay doctor networks DN IPS so afterwards I specify the name there's a base policy rule which have some specific signature uh, signature sets that are enabled uh, like um, I'll show you this maximum detection has around about 37,000 signatures that are enabled to detect and drop in between and around about 180 signatures that only uh, uh, generate an error uh, generate an event so it depends on your deployment if you're very uh, if you have a very risky server that is resides on your network and you want to protect it on a maximum level so you all would obviously go with the ma maximum detection because it has the most number of ips signatures enabled but it all depends on your actually deployment and y your server how much it is it, it has secure I mean security uh, like in does it has any antivirus running on it and is it really vulnerable and it is is it so much uh, I mean crucial for your environment even if it goes down you don't have any backups for that those kind of things or maybe you can't afford uh, it to go down so you go for maximum detection over that so we're gonna be using maximum detection right now so I'll just go and create and edit the policy now it's gonna take a little bit while as it always does in FMC's so mm, <laughs> so I'll just wait that's what I can do or I could fa fast forward this let's see okay the bottom line is I had to cut the video because it was taking a lot of time to load 
So here is that our name and here is our base policy that we selected and oh sorry I just missed communicated to you it's not 37,000 it is 31,000 signatures are enabled f for drop and generate events and 180 rules ah got that right 180 rules almost uh, that only generate event they don't drop the packet so um, now I have these policy layers as in that uh, maximum detection is the one that I just selected. It has some specific rules that are already enabled. Those 31,000 rules are enabled in here. And as you can see, there are a lot of rules that you see that are of this X. This is the basic uh, rule state, meaning what will happen with the packet if an attack has been, uh, you know, like detected, that is, you know, like web vulnerability, scan, attempt, attack has been detected. What's going to happen with the session or the packet? Oh, out of breath. So uh, it's going to drop the packet. So maybe I want something to, you know, um, not drop the packet. I want uh, some some specific app detect uh, web vulnerability scan to pass through. So I could just go in and uh, change the rules from my changes. I could go in and say, you know what, uh, this rule, DNS request attempt rule, I want you to only, uh, maybe I want you to disable that, or maybe I just want you to generate events. Don't do anything with the packet, man, or the session. We just want you to generate some events. That would be cool. Um, we'll be looking at that, but uh, not right now, actually. I'm just gonna be showing you what happens with that our attack that we just generated uh, and hacked the Windows XP. So we'll just leave this rule as it be and go to devices now. Device management. Now we have a virtual FTD 6.6. .6. Again, this is the latest and greatest right now. And, um, oh, not into devices. Sorry about that. Into policies and access control. Uh, I was just trying to show you that what a FTD I have. So I'm trying to be cool here. So edit. And uh, there are no rules as you can see only a network discovery rule is in place. So I'm going to be adding a rule and saying IPS rule. Now I'm going to leave everything at the default. Don't do this in the production environment, please. You have to specify in each, each and every zone, networks, everything should be there for optimal performance. For the inspection part, I'm going to be going in and saying, you know what, I'm going to be using the intrusion policy of DN IPS. And obviously the logging. I'm going to log at the beginning. And there's our rule. Everything is on any, don't do this on production. Please, not this at least. This any, any part, this is really bad. So I'll just save this. And in this new FMC, uh, the deployment part has a deployment history part that is separated and the deployment part. This is the main part. So I'm going into deployment. I'm selecting the FTD. It's going to show me what changes were there. This I basically shows show or hide unmodified policies to so all the policies that weren't modified in this are going to be showing up. So they're showing up. No needed. So I'm going to be deploying this now. So there it is. Now I may fast forward this, this video, but I want to show you this cool uh, uh, notification bar that they have in this new theme. Look at that. It slides from the right to the left. And it's really, um, oh, just goes, like fades away so smoothly. I just see, I'm just seeing it and then feeling enlightened. But it will take some time, so I may forward this video. Okay, the deployment has been completed, and uh, I had to fa uh, cut this video. Now, let's go back again towards our Linux box that was hacking it. Uh, typing in MSF, that's MSF, not MFS. Oh, sorry about that. MSF console and Metasploit is running. And we're gonna be to save time. I'm not. I'm gonna just copy and paste that hack that I just had already, uh, excluding the MSF console. Now I'm inside. I'm gonna use this SMB attack again, and let's see what happens. Exploit. Boom. By now we should have hacked it. 
The first thing this attack does is, is, act, is actually does a scan to, uh, to see if SMB version 1 is running or not on the system because it's quite vulnerable. Now, this is not happening, okay? So login failed, execution expired because the session did timeout or something. So let's go towards the, our FMC and see what we can analyze from the logs and here in the intrusion events, what do we see? Now this is going to be neat. Hopefully, oh, look at that. Isn't this beautiful? I couldn't hack the Windows XP and you could see that this was an attempt to detect SMB version 1. After the attempt, it basically does another attack and possibly another attack. So it basically does three or four attacks to actually get the Windows XP's um, reverse TCP session uh, and execute the exploit accurately. So the first thing it does is obviously uh, does an SMB version 1 uh, query if it's on or not. So this is our line of defense over here now, uh, as I specified over here. This is our line of defense right now, and it's working accurately. This is how IPS really works. So if I hope this has been uh, a very good informa informative lecture for you guys, and thank you for watching.